So what follows is sort of my video diary of my first time trying to grow King Stropharia mushrooms in the garden. Um, you'll note I say hey a lot, and every time I say hey, I mean straw. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoy. Well, today's experiment is we're going to try to grow some Stropharia rugosa annulata mushrooms, King Giant, or uh, wine cap Stropharia mushrooms, and we're going to start by preparing the bed. This used to be an old horseradish growing bed. It's my assistant Yuki, yeah. and in, and we're going to dig out all this dirt in here and all the roots from the horseradish, and then we're going to fill this up with wood chips and get the mushroom spawn, and we're going to see how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do after clearing the plants out is dig this uh, this raised bed down about eight inches to a foot so that uh, I can fill it up with hardwood and wood chips. But uh, we got to dig down, get all the horseradish roots out, and uh, clean it up before I can uh, put any wood chips in. The one thing when you're putting in a mushroom bed is you want it in a generally shady area. Now right now it's pretty sunny, but this is about as sunny as it gets all day. South is that way, so I got shrubbery over here blocking it. There's trees here that put it in shade most of the day, and this is about the only sun it gets. And this is uh, mid-August, so in the midsummer it'll get a little bit more, and in the winter it'll get a lot less sun. Okay, so now I've dug down about uh, 10 inches, a foot deep, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm ready to put in the, the wood chips for the substrate to grow the mushrooms on. Um, you can also use hay for, for these kind of mushrooms, uh, but I'm going to use hardwood wood chips because they're easily available at my local um, hardware store, home gardening center, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll put them in, we'll get them, we'll get them soaked up first in some water, and then uh, we'll put them in here and uh, re-wet it to make sure they're all nice and ready to go. Okay, so here it's day two of putting in the mushroom bed. And um, I couldn't find hardwood wood chips this time of year. I guess everybody's out of them because it's the end of landscaping season. It's late August. So another method to grow them is to use bales of straw. And uh, we're going to soak these down for a couple days in this kiddie pool because it can hold water, whereas this is not going to hold water. It's just going to all run out. But um, we'll soak them in here for a couple days, and then we'll put it in, in different layers uh, with uh, the straw and the uh, mushroom spawn. So once these are all soaked down, uh, they have about 70% moisture in them. You basically you grab a handful and only a little bit of water comes out. Um, once these are soaked after a couple days of hosing these down and letting them sit in the pool, we'll put them in here. We'll use a pitchfork. That's why it's right next door here because otherwise it would be really heavy to try to move one of those once they're wet. Okay, so it's been a couple days and um, a few days ago I ordered the wine cap, King Strafaria, Strafaria go so and you let them mushroom spawn and uh, these hay bells have been sitting here for a few days they're wet wet and moist I'm gonna put some of this in here because it's supposed to, the spawn's supposed to come tomorrow so I'm gonna put some of the some of the uh, hay in the bed in the, in the, where the bed's gonna be so I can build it up to a little bit higher level um, because the spawn's supposed to be buried um, anywhere from about two to six inches below the top so I'm gonna put some of this in to get it started so I don't have to do it all tomorrow in case the weather's bad because Actually, the last couple of days here, it's late August, mid-late August, it's been kind of rainy and cold, and actually it's been in the 50s, and in the mountains, they even got some snow up in the top already, so uh, a bit early, but anyway, in case the weather's bad tomorrow, I'm not going to have a lot of time to do this, so I'm going to try to put some of the hay here first, and, uh, and uh, put the spawn in tomorrow when it comes, so I'll get started. Now, after putting this first layer in, I'm going to compress it down as much as possible so that when I put the spawn in, it's a little bit more packed. Some of the methods that people use are growing it directly on the bale, so it's a little more compact, and others they use a mixture of hay, cardboard, wood chips, or just cardboard, and wood chips, or just cardboard and hay. But anyway, I want to pack this down some and uh, make a little bit denser surface for the spawn to grow on when it comes. And it'll pack down some naturally, but I want to get it as packed as I can right from the beginning. Hi all, back here again. Uh, so today, the uh, mushroom spore from Fungi Perfecti King, the uh, wine cap, or the uh, uh, Stropharia rugosa annulata, Mushroom sport cane, not the fungi perfecti. 
Uh, you can see here that it's all, all this wood chip here is all uh, full of mycelium and ready to go. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bag up, break this up a little bit, and put it, and put it, inoculate the hay bale. All right. So I'm opening it up, and then after I inoculate the hay, I'm going to cover it with a little more hay, and then I'm going to put some casing on it. And uh, see how it goes. It's all an experiment, but it's a fun kind of thing. Here's another look at the at the wood chips. You can see the mycelium in there formed all pretty well, and we're ready to go. So I've already broken this up. I'll spread it around. I'll spread it out some more. Break up the bigger pieces. And make sure you have good contact with the hay. I'm going to put it mostly toward the center because the outside of this is more likely to dry out, especially with these stones here. At least that's my theory. We'll see how it goes though. So this is broken up fairly well. And then I'm going to start putting uh, some of the hay on it. Just a nice even layer, two or three inches or so. I'll probably compress it down a little bit because this is less dense than wood chips. Um, and uh, it probably needs a little bit to make good contact with the, with the mushroom spawn. So that's with the hay on top and next I'll put the case in. Okay, so now all the uh, substrates on top of the mushroom spore, it's all in here. Um, a couple inches of this on here, two or three or so. I can press it back down because the uh, hay is pretty uh, compressible. And next I'm going to put the casing on. As mentioned earlier, some people say use it, some people say don't. Um, they say it helps to hold moisture in. And because I'm in a more arid environment here in Colorado, I decided I am going to use a, a casing over the top of the substrate. And in this case, uh, what, from what is recommended from what I've read, we use a 50-50 mixture of peat and garden soil. And that's what I have already mixed up here in the wheelbarrow. So I'm just going to place this evenly over the top, a couple inches of this, and then uh, uh, water the whole thing afterward. So uh, after that, uh, we'll uh, take another look. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, soak this down with the hose uh, for a few minutes, uh, make sure everything's nice and wet, and we'll leave it at that. So now i got the garden hose. And I'm just gonna wet down the surface here. It's actually already rained today, a little while ago as a matter of fact. I guess it's a good day for putting in a mushroom bed, maybe, maybe not. We've had quite a bit of rain here the last three days for at least here in Colorado, but um, so all the haze substrate's nice and moist. And now I just gotta moisten the casing down uh, to make sure it all soaks in there. And you can put a sprinkle on it for 10 to 15 minutes or so if you want. I'm just using this uh, Oh, here it should be fine. Um, so basically, the idea is to moisten it down, and uh, you want to keep it moist. If you're not getting any rain, you want to keep it moist every few days, at least until it sets in. Um, winter's coming up here, so maybe in a month or so, I'll come back and check if it hasn't, if we haven't gotten a hard freeze, because I don't want to disturb it once it gets a hard freeze. But uh, we'll come back and check and see if any of the mycelium has growing into the hay. One other thing, um, if you have pets, we have a dog. Crumble, come here. Come on. Okay, sure. come. Good boy. One other thing I forgot to mention, um, if you have pets, like I do, dog or children, um, you're probably going to want to put some kind of a uh, little bit of uh, garden fencing around it. Uh, I found that even just the tiniest bit will keep the dog uh, from going into uh, most gardens, unless he's chasing a squirrel. Um, but uh, but basically, uh, put something around it. Even a little bit helps keep the kids out. So there it is. Mostly dog safe uh, and at least kid obstructive. You keep them out a little bit. Uh, it's not going to stop everything, but it'll mostly keep the kids out and certainly the dog. All right, so uh, it's been uh, a couple months since I planted the the mushroom bed and um, it's actually been an exceptionally warm fall. I've actually still growing some hot peppers with the help of some 
tarps and plastic sheeting, but actually it's one week before Halloween, which means it's exceptionally warm. And uh, it's been about two months since I put the, the bed in, and uh, I just came by the other day to uh, take a look at it, and I noticed that uh, there's some white threads uh, up at the top of the casing, uh, which means it's, the mycelium is actually starting to pop through the top. I don't know if I'll, I'll get any fruitings or flushings this fall. It seems kind of late, and it's only been growing for two months, plus uh, once winter does start here in Colorado, it gets cold pretty quick, and I, I would expect everything to go you know, to go into hibernation or whatnot. But anyway, um, so I found out that uh, there's some of this uh, white mycelium here up on the top of the casing, uh, white mycelium up on top of the casing, and uh, I wanted to take a look underneath the casing to see uh, what might be in there. And uh, we'll take a quick look in there and see what's going on in the hay. So, I'm gonna just dig in really quick and then I'll cover this back up when I'm done. You can see it's still soft. I'll take a quick look in here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see here? It's all through the hay. You can see it all up in the hay here. So I'm just gonna put that back in and we'll cover it back up and put a little more casing on top. And we'll let it go. But um, anyway, so yeah, there's, there's mycelium all in there. Uh, all throughout the hay um, and uh, I don't think we'll get anything before winter sets in but uh, we'll come back uh, when we do get the first flushes maybe maybe early spring we'll see how it goes maybe back in uh, March or April and uh, we'll go from there but anyway right now everything seems, seems to be going well with the stropharia uh, mushroom bed and uh, hoping for some some good luck in the spring one more quick thing I forgot to mention is um, I've read in a couple places where um, since, especially since this is a raised bed and want to cover things up. So what I intend to do is once I rake all the, uh, the leaves up from the yard, I'm just going to cover over the top of this and maybe some, some around the edges to help uh, keep it from getting too cold in the winter. Because we can get, you know, usually it doesn't go below five, below zero Fahrenheit, but we've had winters down here in the Denver area where I've seen it as low as 18 or 20 below zero. Now that would probably take it out, but don't expect it this year. Like I said, very warm fall so far, but anything can happen with the weather out here. So one last check in before winter really sets in. Uh, at the end of the fall, I raked up all the leaves and put them on top to cover the bed. Hopefully this will protect it more from the winter. I've read in several places that uh, you want to do this um, to protect it from the elements. And here, hopefully, this will help protect it from uh, some of the elements a little bit. Um, at least some of the excessive freezing that we can get here in Colorado. Anyway, we'll see in the spring uh, if it uh, helps or hinders, and uh, we'll check back then. So now it's uh, the first week in April. The last scene was uh, the late December, about December 20th, and today's about April 11th. And I wanted to check on the progress of the mushroom bed. Um, you can see from the last scene that uh, all the leaves are compacted down due to the rain and the snow and the general decay of the leaves. Um, but what I want to do is check to see what's going on underneath the leaves. Pull up some of these leaves and you can see right here uh, and uh, over here, here's some right here. This is actually the mycelium starting to come up into the leaves. So that's a great sign. That means that the bed has made it through the winter. Um, so this is a close-up of the mycelium. You can see it coming up through the leaves. These are leaves that were put in last fall. You can see it all over in here. Nice mycelium all up in the leaves. That's a good sign that they survived the winter, having all that coming up. So now that we know that the mushrooms survived the winter and are actually growing into the uh, covering we put on uh, early in the winter, uh, hopefully in a month or so, we'll get some mushrooms popping up through the leaves. Okay, 
it's uh, May 15th and uh, we have success. Um, so over here, are, you can see the first flushes that came up and uh, these are the ones that I did the time lapse off of. And then um, more recently, later on, we have uh, this one right here. And then there's a couple right in here. And uh, this morning I just noticed this little cluster coming up right here of the uh, Strophraria rugoso annulatus. Uh, anyway, um, this is my first attempt at growing mushrooms and uh, it, it worked. I, my method is not, you know, the definitive all, of course. Uh, I just gathered what I could from uh, what I read on the web and what I read in the uh, sites that, that sell uh, this variety. And I gave it a try and I had some success. They all seem to be coming up around the edges. Here's the big ones, original. And then here's another cluster. Here's another cluster starting to come up. And another cluster of a bunch of them coming up here and here. But that's all around the edges of the circular mushroom bed, kind of like a fairy ring. Very interesting. Anyway, I hope you got something useful out of this video, and thanks for watching.